Right, dear friends, we welcome you to Temple of Fine Arts Coimbatore. And again, this is the third and final part of the conversation with Sri Ambi Subramaniam. The first two parts, we have put the links in our description. Do catch up if you have not yet. So, Ambi ji, uh, uh, we'll talk about your life uh, today. So, how has your family been in your journey so far? And uh, we also heard you uh, uh, got married recently, so there is an addition to the family. So, tell us about the support system that you have in the form of your family. Well, I have been very lucky there. I think it's um, it's very important to have uh, people that you can rely on. Whether it's, I mean, I think the most important uh, thing when you're looking at that is um, mentally if you're able to rely on people around you, that makes everything you do so much easier. Uh, so, and I think one, one very nice thing is, like I've been very lucky to have uh, of course Bindu and, and uh, Narayana uh, who are my siblings and it kind of uh, is very nice when you have siblings who support you uh, but at the same time keep you grounded and I think that's something that we all kind of do for each other I think it's important to be there for um, uh, be there for each other but at the same time um, kind of uh, look at as, as a third party to say okay fine I, I think this is something that um, you should work on or, or this is something this is a path I don't think you should take or um, I think uh, it's very very helpful to have uh, people in your life where you're able to um, listen to that criticism or listen to that uh, um, suggestions or uh, because you understand that they're coming from a place of love and um, of course my parents have always been uh, amazing and uh, it, they've always kind of uh, been inspirational in that sense and uh, they've taught me everything that I kind of know in uh, in the music field uh, as well uh, of course um, I got married in uh, the end of January and uh, everything else aside uh, of course uh, it has been very tough for a lot of people and uh, with this uh, pandemic and everything uh, but I I would be um, dishonest if I weren't saying that I, I have enjoyed this time at home and I've enjoyed um, this kind of phase where I've been able to spend time and uh, all of us as a family a lot of times we're, we're all in different places and you know it's it's difficult to kind of have this sit down when we're all there at the same time so um, you kind of take the positives that have been um, there in this situation so in this last year it has been nice to kind of um, spend time with with the people that that really matter to you and um, yeah so I, I think uh, family has been a huge support system uh, I understand through Instagram thanks to Instagram again I understand there are three other members of your family who are very thrilled that you are always home right now that is uh, Bhairavi, Todi and Kapi I get the names right of your cats yeah, can you tell us something about them you know actually um, they are a huge reason why we were kind of able to get through this last one year because we um, uh, we actually got them just before the lockdown um, and they were at that time they were like two month old kittens uh, so they've they're uh, three Persian kittens but all like all different colors um, they all one one amazing thing about cats is they have such well-defined personalities <laughs> they all are such such different uh, different individuals so it's it's um it's really nice to kind of just sometimes even sit and watch them 
live their lives and uh, them you you see them doing their own thing uh, so yeah i mean if people don't have pets i highly highly recommend <laughs> that they get them absolutely true absolutely true and uh, the names so did you name them like seeing how they are like you mentioned no each of them have their own personality so are they named after their personalities or uh, with the ragas associated and also do uh, did you name them one also how do you go about naming like subramanya and the uh, tait sadam project now these three well i think naming them was a group decision um, but i think at, at that time uh, we kind of uh, named them based on how we thought they looked and what what we thought the ragas made sense um, i i don't think um, like at that point we weren't looking at personalities but yeah it's it's uh, we were looking at raga names and uh, i think they've all kind of grown into those names <laughs> so bairavi is the most serious looking cat <laughs> but yeah i think also with uh, with naming uh, a lot of times my my sister is the one who has a flair for you know, all of these things um subramania kind of uh was a kind of play on words of course on based on our uh, our surname but uh, we thought it kind of also nicely represented the kind of music that we wanted to do uh with the taishadam project actually um of course mahesh and akshay are are two wonderful artists uh, there and um the idea was so subramania is a little more on the world music side where we're using uh indian music to kind of play uh music from different parts of the world uh but tai sadam project was a little more um kind of indian carnatic music uh with electronic with uh, other things but it's it's very very deeply rooted in carnatic music and uh, i think the point there was to kind of um to have this uh feeling of that Uh, classical music or traditional music can be cool and i think sometimes uh, when people talk about tai sadam or talk about those kind of things um it's sometimes looked at as a in a derogatory context or he said oh he's such a tai sadam or um when you look at things and you uh these are things that um, you kind of take for granted so we wanted to kind of uh, own that and be the tai sadam project and uh, say that okay fine uh, traditional stuff that we do day in and day out can be cool can be uh, can be fun can be uh, presented in a way that uh, uh, is uh, kind of more accessible that's so awesomely honest <laughs> so nice okay uh, so um life as you look at it there's like so much of ups and downs always there's no one perfect life so through the ups and downs especially through the downs uh what is your greatest motivation especially in your musical journey itself when you hit a low what is what becomes your main motivation well i think a uh, motivation for me comes from a couple of different places one is uh like i realize that as an artist i will probably never be at a level where i'm saying okay today i'm happy with the way i'm playing and that's it because that that's also a very dangerous kind of uh, way to think of it and i think also it's it's important to kind of understand that the goal post can and should keep moving so the moment that you get a little better then uh then your your kind of goals cannot be the same as it was 6 months ago uh, and for me i also get uh, very inspired by uh, working with amazing musicians and amazing people so for me that um, as a composer as well i really enjoy uh, this space where i'm writing for somebody so um, like recently uh, there was a composition there's a tilana that uh, i wrote and we kind of did it with uh, shweta mohan 
was such a fantastic artist. Uh, so for me, that was also very interesting because I was trying to write for that particular artist. Or uh, we did a, a collaboration with uh, Shashank, the fantastic flute player. Um, so again, you're when you're trying to write um, for a person, you're trying to study and say, okay, fine, um, this is something that. Uh, he is a master at or he's so good he sounds so good when he does this uh, how do I bring this into the composition or how do I uh, how do I create a composition where uh, this artist uh, is able to do their best so for me um, I really try to look at that uh, and I uh, to some extent of course um, you can't completely ignore that but to some extent, I try not to look at uh, too many metrics, too many, uh, because I think nowadays there is there's too much of focus on, oh, did this get enough views, or why didn't this do so well, or uh, there are there are uh, um, um, more positive comments in this one, or why didn't this person like that one? I think there's too much of focus on that right now, uh, so. I think um, or success or failure of um, kind of what you want to do shouldn't be measured by that, but it should be measured by how it how that project makes you feel. So um, I think because of that, uh, I'm not too worried. And also, I think now um, it's it's interesting because as you have a longer career. As your career gets longer and longer, sometimes uh, things that that didn't necessarily do very well when you released it suddenly gets discovered five years later. Like this happens. Uh, I remember uh, when you started a YouTube channel, or you start, uh, or somebody put some clip, uh, nobody really um, saw it or nobody commented. But then five years later, ten years later. Uh, suddenly I, I'll get a forward from somebody with that video and saying oh or how old are you at that age or or oh I really like this piece so I, I think um, uh, it's important not to kind of uh, pay too much attention to 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 that because that will end up affecting your creative process all right so before we say goodbye and before we let you go, uh, would you like to say something to the aspiring young artists today? Or those who are just starting their journey also? Well, I think it's important to really enjoy what you're doing and to kind of uh, whatever you're doing to consistently try to get better each day. Because there are, there are certain points where you feel that you're you're working and you're working and you're working but you're just not seeing the results and then all of a sudden one day you kind of wake up and then you see this huge progress so that's what happened to me a lot uh, as well and I, uh, there were parts in my career where I felt like like I'm, I'm putting in so much work but I'm not seeing uh, things uh, pan out the way I want to but then all of a sudden uh, at one point something just clicks and I think uh, also in this day and age it's very important to uh, try to understand the different things that you're interested in and explore them and they don't always have to kind of fit in your head so uh, if you if you're interested in music go for it if you're interested in music and math and maybe a little bit of technology and you also like a little bit of uh, piano and you want to learn uh, production, that's fine. I think but whatever you're interested in, go for it. Because I think also we're kind of uh, in a stage where we're all preparing for jobs that don't really exist yet. So if you are interested in something and you become really, really proficient at that, you can create your own job. You can create um, something entirely new that no one else has thought of because you're using skills that really, really fascinate you. 
So don't worry always about how things are going to fit together. If they fit together great, if they don't, you may find that answer a little later in your life. Thank you. Thank you dear friends and uh, that was my conversation with Sri Ambi Subramanyam. Hope you have enjoyed and for further updates videos do check out our YouTube channel to subscribe to us if you haven't already. For news and updates about other videos we are there on Instagram and Facebook at TFA CBE official. Thank you so much. Stay safe. Goodbye.